hard when your body changes because then I'm like, I, aging is one thing, you know, aging, having lines, 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 drooping jowls. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is uh, episode 122. We will be planning summer projects. <coughs> Welcome to my knitting channel. Um, I'm sorry, one of my neighbors is burning something uh, in their yard, which you're not allowed to do. Um, we're only allowed to have open flame if you're cooking food. And that is not food cooking. Um, and my throat is closing up. Um, I'm so mad right now because, like, I just got <laughs> these guys out of here so I can, like, enjoy my backyard again and bought some stuff so I can enjoy outside. And if I'm going to have a, ne a neighbor that's going to be burning crap all summer, well, first of all, <laughs> it's not going to happen because I will Nancy Drew this and figure out who it is, and then I'm going to call the cops on them until they stop. We have really small house lots, as you can see. Like, every house, like, we're on a... I think we're on a half acre, but every, cause we're on a corner, but everyone else is like, a what's a third, a third of an acre. Um, <clears throat> you're very, very close to people. And I don't know how it's literally a, law, a city ordinance that you cannot burn anything on your property. That is not food. Like you cannot have an open fire unless you are, um, uh, cooking food. I mean, you can have a fireplace, but that goes up into the sky and it's in the winter when no one's outside. You know what I mean? But like in the summer, for God's sake, it's just wafting everywhere. And I know one house always had them going and I had to stop my walks because it was just the whole neighborhood just was so full of smoke. <clears throat> and I don't know how you can do that knowing that people have asthma and a lot of people have asthma and there are children around here. I don't know how you can be like that oblivious to everyone around you. So on the first day where it's nice and I wanted to open up everything. And again, my, you know, Selfish neighbors. Oh, God, that is not a guy doing the lawn. Are you kidding me? I swear to God. So I think the owners are over here at the house um, doing some landscape work. It looks like you can't see because it's it, the sun's blowing it out. But, um, oh, my God, it's such a gorgeous day. And I'm sitting here. I opened all the windows. And I'm like, oh, and I sit down. And I'm like, ah. Oh, and I was like, <coughs> who's burned? And. You don't know what they're burning. Who know it could be something in, in you know, I don't trust these people. <laughs> I don't trust them to burn stuff that's not going to be harmful to like you know, people and animals and the environment. <laughs> but we're we're too close for we're too close. Like whenever someone has a barbecue, I, that does not bother me. I don't know why barbecue smoke does not bother me probably cuz it's not like smoky. Because you've like got the thing on it and you're trying to smoke the, the meat or whatever. I don't eat meat, so I don't know. But barbecue, the smell of barbecue doesn't bother me. But something about open flame just burning stuff like kills me. It's ruining my day. <laughs> I really am like, look how sunny it is. Look how nice it is. It's so nice everywhere. It's nice and warm. Sun's out. You know, yay. Okay, so my backyard tree is uh, just starting to have little buds on it. They're not blooms yet, they're just buds. 
So I'm excited to see. Uh, she's always so pretty. I can't wait for her to her leaves to come out. Um, I'm excited to see what's what's happening across the street. They are an old elderly couple, like elderly. So they must be the property owners because I don't think landscapers would be like in their 80s. Oh my God. Is this going to, I swear to God, this is the guy that does it by himself, so it's going to take him two hours? You can hear that, can't you? My throat is just burning. Got it. Okay, I'm not wearing anything knitwear because... I didn't feel like it. And I don't really have anything um, that's comfortable on my belly yet. I'm, I think I'm fully he healed from the surgery, but I'm still bloated. And um, I'm going to see some more doctors about that now that they can't blame it on um, any of the parts that I had taken out. So, because that was a lot of two, two specialties going, it's that one. And them going, no, it's fine here, go, it's that one. And I'm like... Okay, maybe it's both. <laughs> can we can we still do stuff anyway? <laughs> no, they couldn't. And my new doctor is a lady. <clears throat> so I'm hoping I actually get somewhere with the Not that I found lady doctors to be any more um open to open to like pain to believing my pain but I get a lot less pushback and a lot less um, psychological referrals when I see lady doctors which is nice and I'm making my husband go with me for the first time because I have noticed that if I'm alone I get talked to horrendously and so I'm like, even if you're there for the first time, I can see how this lady is and s at least get something going, you know, and then I can go by myself the other times because I just, they don't believe, I don't know why they don't, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Okay. Anyway, should we start with whips today? Uh, my first whip is my test knit. If you remember, I was having some issues with this uh, last time. I don't even know what's happening right now. Um, I am, well, the pattern, I'm waiting for the update. Um, but I got through that whole thing and then I, the whole section that I redid. So this is it with the green and the blue. And then the blue by itself. <coughs> We bring in the other green here so you can see the whole progression of the of the colors i think it looks real nice because you know if you stay within on the color wheel this three color or it's actually two colors next to each other you you're usually okay um so that part that i thought i did wrong i hadn't done wrong and what i the stitch counts were wrong and it had a repeat and then a stitch count and I was not getting that stitch count and I was like I'm gonna put this out row by row and so I can check my stitch counts each row and my stitch counts were right and I'm like why is this number wrong because the math was wrong and I was like I know she had other testers testing and I'm like well they surely found a way to do it if if there's nothing you know there hasn't been an updated pattern to go off of so I message her and I'm like I don't know what to do because I can't get this math to add up and she's like okay I'll take a look at it and then she's like well then I had two people finish and they didn't have any problems and I'm like okay that's weird because the math just doesn't the math's not adding up and like it's it's the math and so I showed her where I, I wrote out each um, row 
and the plus and minus of that what that row was and she was like huh well let me talk to testers and see what's happening so she got back to me and she's like uh yeah none of the testers uh counted their stitch counts and i'm like how how could you test a pattern and not count your check the stitch count? that's like part of testing what are you doing in your testing so now i'm wondering if we need to if we need to sit down and talk about test knitting patterns for these people that don't know how to test knit patterns i'm like what now they didn't and i'm like who doesn't check stitch counts when they're test knitting and she's like i don't know <laughs> so i'm still waiting for the updated before i i don't even know how to where i where to go with that i don't have any idea so i'm just waiting to see what's happening um so that's my test knit um i have a new a new cast on um this is my dk knit top this is in the kotlin from um kotlin from Nitpicks. This is a DK weight. It is 70% tangui cotton, 30% linen. Uh, and this is just in the color black. 123 for 50 grams. So that is 246 for 100 grams. And these come in 50 gram balls. So make sure you get enough. I, I really do like this base uh, for summer. Um, it's it's just a little bit different than plain cotton, which I, I don't mind plain cotton. I, my problem with cotton is twofold. <laughs> it's structure and softness. Um, so if you can get some structure and um, some softness into it still, I like the cotton basic that is no longer available from Knit Crate. That's probably my favorite and how it's gone forever. <laughs> Um, this is not as soft, but it has better structure and I still find it to be next to skin soft. So I don't have a problem with it. Um, so this, this is actually one of our May projects that I kind of started early because, well, we'll get to that later. Um, uh, well, I'll just tell you now. So the, the, the DK tufts, I have a bunch of cotton ones so I want to get the cotton ones done while we're in the um, you know warm months so because I want to wear these the most so I have four balls and like I said I take I weigh them all and the the heaviest one gets the cropped version because we're doing a cropped version and a full version so that's going to be two projects each month so you're going to be a cropped and a full version uh, so I wanted to just get, st I didn't want to wait till May, I just wanted to get started because I finished the other one, so I just wanted to get started. Um, I have a two two of these, the other one's like a boysenberry, or blackberry, blackberry. it's a very, very dark purple, uh, so I want to get those done, and then I have the um, alpaca cotton merino. Now, those ones are also okay, the problem is when I sweat in those, I smell the alpaca. It's not even the wool. It's the alpaca smells. <laughs> and like if you wake up and you're covered in sweat because you know you're perimenopausal, so you like got all this sweat and then you just smell wet alpaca. It's not been a good time for me. But I do wear the alpaca all throughout the year. It's not just a summer one for me. Um, I don't find it to be too cold in the in the winter. I don't know that I would wear these in the winter because these are you know, cotton's not the best at keeping warm if it's not mixed with, uh, if it's mixed with, with uh, wool I'll wear it but not on its own I won't. So that is my new, uh, that's going to be the cropped one and then we'll do the full size. I also am still working on the sport weight double layer hat but I haven't touched it. Um, that might uh, go by the wayside as we ramp up for summer and my brain's coming back so I'm able to actually read patterns and do things. Um, oh, finished objects. 
For finished, finished objects, I have uh, the full length version of the pink. Um, this is the worsted weight now. So we have the cropped and the full, full length. Um, I did not wear this today because it's pink. Um, I'm actually going to put this on later and see. Um, I'm going to try to wear both of them and see what I like to wear them to like get them stretched out and, and fitting my body. Uh, so then I can cut all the ends off and, um, this one is very, very uh, see-through. This is not going to be one that I... Like, you can see my belly button right through it. <laughs> and my belly button does not look good right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that thing's still not healed. Uh, my, my other uh, incisions have mostly healed. I have one that's not healing well. It's, like, splitting open, but it's closed, but it it's going to scar, which I don't care. Um, but it didn't close as well. The other one's like, you can't even see it. The other one's kind of open, um, which is probably my fault for scratching it. So don't scratch your incisions as much as they itch for nine weeks. They will itch. Um, so this is finished. Um, yeah, finished. Yay. Okay, anyway, so let's talk about summer projects. Really, guys? So I'm going to show you three projects that I, I really want to get through um, this year. The first one. Is called Lunch at Tiffany's by Anne Catherine Bush. This pattern is five and a half euros. And I've showed you it before because I tried to do it last year. Now, <coughs> this, t it's a top, but I bought the dress because you can make the, the dress, the top from the dress. Um, and there's different, you can make it with sleeves, you can make it without sleeves. Um, I've shown you this before, but this is the one I'm interested in making. Now, it's uh, two by two ribbing, and then down here it's one by one ribbing. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue the two by two ribbing down here. Um, and I've told you this before. I used to have a top that looked like this that was baby blue, and I just loved it. It had that crossover, and it was um, uh, the uh, double rib, two by two ribbing. Um, I'm just going to carry it down uh, into into here once I cross over. Um, <clears throat> but you can have it, uh, this, I'm doing the sleeveless. This is the sleeveless version. It also has short sleeves and it also has a long sleeve sweater version, which I would also like to do. The problem is, like I just said, <laughs> my boob shrank and my stomach grew so I'm not sure how that's gonna work for it not sure but I this is my number one this is my number one of what I want to do um, for real because I have such good memories of that top and I want it so bad um, the second one you probably all know because I've talked about this before it's the rocket tee by Tannis Lavalle, 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 Lavalle. I don't know how to s s pronounce that. Um, this is seven dollars and fifty cents. It is just a V-neck uh, fingering weight. Um, I am not doing stripes. I'm telling you that right now. Not doing stripes. Um, this. People were doing with a st one of the strands was mohair and the other one was fingering, I think. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Oh, it has a 35. Okay. Six inches of positive ease. Yeah, I don't think I want to do six inches of positive ease. 
Um, you know, I really liked uh, Created for You by Laura. She made her Rockety, and I loved the fit on her. I absolutely loved the fit on her. I might ask, I might reach out and ask her. Um, I don't know if that's rude. I'll try to see if she has a Ravelry for her Rocket Tea, if she put anything in there. Because I love the way it fit her. It just, it looks so beautiful on her. And I was like, that's exactly how I want mine to fit. How do I get mine to fit like that? I don't know. <laughs> but hers looks fantastic. Um, yeah, I should probably go through the, you know, almost 3,000 projects and see. You know what bothers me, though? There's not a lot of people wearing their projects on on all of Ravelry projects. There's a lot of people not wearing their projects and not saying what size they made or what size they are, which irritates me because it's like, how do I know what fit I want if you're not telling me, you know, what you what you made, you know, what size you are and what size you made so we know the fit because it doesn't say anything about the fit really so i'm not even sure how <clears throat> to to work with my belly if i'm going to look uh, perpetually in my first trimester um or second what is it i don't know it, it's it keeps getting bigger <laughs> um, it's now this it's 34 I measured around 34 my bust is 35 so now um, I'm pretty sure it like I used to have a 20 inch waist when I was modeling I had a 20 inch waist um, which was 20 years ago yeah, 25 years ago when I was like 21, I had a 20 inch waist. So that's a big deal for me <laughs> to go from 21 to, or to go from 20 to 34. That's a big deal. So I'm hoping this doctor can help me get that under control and figure out what's happening. Because I'm like, I'm afraid to design anything that's going to, I mean, do I just embrace it and just look perpetually pregnant? Like, I don't know how to, I can't hide it. It's not hideable. It's not like, I mean, it is if I oversize everything. But I hate wearing oversized stuff because I look like I'm a little kid wearing grown-up clothes. You know what I mean? And that's so not my, that's not my style. I mean, is it funny now that I don't, I, I got rid of the baby maker and now <laughs> should I just let people, like my, my biggest fear is that people are going to look at me and assume, even though I think I look too old, I don't want people to assume because I wouldn't want to make them uncomfortable because they assume, but then I would probably be sarcastic and have fun with it. You know what I mean? And I don't want to do that either. I feel like all of my life is just being afraid of interacting with humans. But I don't know what to do about my body. I don't know what to do about it looking weird and being weird and feeling weird. It's And it's not even dysmorphia. It's not in my head. It's literally... I can prove it. <laughs> you know? I can prove it with the measuring tapes. It's not like... Oh, you're insane. Plus, my pants don't fit. <laughs> Which is the worst part of it. Is that my pants don't fit. Then I bought all new bras because my boobs got so big. And now I'm like, now I don't need them. Because I was like, crap, now I got to wear a bra. Now they're gone, so I don't. Okay, my third. <laughs> tell me you're having problems with your aging body, too. Like, tell me things are... <laughs> Am I all alone? I'm all alone, aren't I? Oh. Okay, the last one I'm going to show you is the... Iliada by Myrna Batten. This is free. And I saw this because um, Laughing Cat Fibers had this done on one of her bases. And there's something about this top. I'm trying to 
A lot of these pictures are dark. I'm trying to find one that's not in the dark. Um, so it, it's a scoop neck, and that shoulder detail is what I'm loving. It looks like a uh, old shale, just some sort of detail there on the sleeve and at the bottom. Um, this looks to be two skeins of um, fingering. Um, two skeins of fingering. The other one is also two skeins of fingering um, the rocket tee. But the um, the lunge at Tiffany's is such a hard pattern because of the yarn she used. is really expensive and I don't want to buy it. Um, and the yardage is weird. And the um, gauge is weird. So I'm going to have to actually do a gauge swatch and figure out what the heck that pattern's going to be. That should probably not be the first one I do is what I'm trying to say. That should probably not be the first one. It should probably be the Rocket T or this. Uh, since I haven't bought the Rocket T yet, it should probably be this free one. Um, which I also really like. There's just so, it's like a, like a romantic vibe to it, like a, a gothic romantic vibe to it. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, you know me, I want to do everything in black, so I'm like, Rrr. so I might have to go through all of my, which ones, you know, which one, yarns do I have that are the same, this one also has a full sleeve, a full length sleeve version, where you can do a full, her, her pictures are really, really dark, like shadowy, it's annoying. I hate when people try to get all artsy with their pictures because really all I want to see is the actual thing. Can you see? They're so dark. But so that takes the that old shale. I think it's, it looks similar to some sort of lace pattern. Takes it all the way down the sleeve, which I don't like. I like the short sleeve version. Um, <clears throat> so those are three tops I'm hoping to get done this summer. Um, cause I don't have summer tops that aren't, um, these. Even though I was also hoping to have something I could throw over them, I'm still, I have three, I didn't bring it in here. I have three, um, three skeins of, uh, Malabrigo Machita that is the colorway violin that I tried to make a crochet cover up with last year that d was wildly uh, not at all like the picture. Um, did not fit at all like I thought it would. Um, so I'm still hoping to make some sort of cover up <coughs> that I I was still hoping to make some sort of cover-up that I could just throw over, like, to take the dogs outside. Because I, I take uh, Lola outside. I don't leave because we have hawks. And we lost tree cover when, the, when they took our ash because we had ash boards. Um, so I don't let her out by herself. I go out with her every time. And when it's, like, 90 degrees, I might be in here in one of my little cropped... I might be in here in this, my big old belly. <laughs> and so if I'm going to go out or maybe I want to go get the mail or maybe take a walk, I just something easy that I can throw on that will basically cover up my belly, the front of me. <laughs> um, so I'm still looking for that. That's something I'm still, still looking for. Uh, so if I find that, I will definitely add it to what I'm going to get done. Uh, I went and found the Machita. What is this lovely color? And um, I have 300 grams of it. So I could very easily uh, make something uh, to just throw over whatever. Um, 
so if you have suggestions. <laughs> I would like to hear them. So here's some other yarns that I want to use up <coughs> this summer. Um, uh, bamboo Pop Sock. Um, this is a hat for me. I got bla a black one for me, for me, for a summer hat. Don't really wear summer hats, but I thought it would be nice to have this. So once I finish my sport weight hat, I'm going to, uh, this will take its place and it'll just be my go-to probably for the entire summer. <laughs> it will probably take me the entire summer to finish it because it's like 500 yards, 492 yards. Um, but yeah, I did get one for me. Um, the other yarn I want to do is the Sock Obsession yarns. It is a fairy witchcraft. Fairy witchcraft. Um, I got this base because it is a two-ply, and I love a two-ply. I just like how the stitches look. I know some people don't like two-ply. I love two-ply. I love the way it looks. Um, now, two-ply for 100 grams, it's 463 yards, and I thought that was not real. So I got it to see if it's real. Um... 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. <clears throat> um, this, like I said, I think is going to be uh, my shawl, Michelle. And um, every year I do like a really brightly colored, um, well, typically I do a brightly colored, um, fun, airy, um, colorful, colorful shawl for, um, for the summer. So this is going to be this year's um, summer shawl. <clears throat> I also have this, which was our V-back tee that fit like crap, remember? Uh, that looks like if it's a baby. Um, I don't know what happened because I made another one that fit fine. <laughs> um, this is my own yarn. This is uh, one of my, this is on a MCN base. MCN fingering, not the high twist MCM, just regular high twist, uh, just regular MCM base. 400 and, is it 52? I don't know the yardage. Uh, but this is uh, the Colorway Vampire Bride. Um, it is gray and burgundy with some black speckles. Um, so I love this base. I love this color. And what do you think? Rocket tea? I think this, the, this is too dark for the, the Iliada for the, the, uh, cap sleeves. I feel like this is going to be just too much too like too dark for that. Um, So I was thinking maybe the rocket tea. We might do the rocket tea. I'd... If if whatever this is going to be made into, I'm going to wear it because this is my this is the the colorway from that collection that I made for me. This was for me. This I have been dreaming about this forever. This one was for me. Very very excited and. I can see doing this in like a lilac, a lavender, um, you know, going that way with the gray, you know, just lightening this up. So we've got some lilac and lavender. I just I love it. I love it so much. Um, there's two other things that I, <clears throat> I have 200 grams of this Swish DK. I'm thinking it's called Karma Heather. It's like a pinky purple weird, weird thing. Um, I'm thinking that this might be the lunch at Tiffany's blouse because her says that weird thing, but it's two fingerings held together, but the fingering has a weird yardage. So it's, I'm not sure how fingering weight it is because I, it's got like 500 something yards and that to me is not a fingering base, but then like a lace base is like 800 yards per a hundred 
grams. So like I'm not sure lace weight I think also is has very wide discrepancies of discrepancies of is that even the right word? A wide range of yardage. And I'm I think I'm going because I'd, this doesn't look like I would really like it. Um, I mean, the color is fine. I like pink and purple, so the color is fine with me. But didn't I use this for a sh uh, I didn't like it. But that was the undyed. This is dyed. So, yeah, because this is 100% fine superwash merino wool. I'm thinking this might be the lunch at Tiffany's. Um, and I'll see if I can get Gage with it and do that, maybe. Then I have Swish in worsted weight, and I have four of these. Um, Rose Heather, which is almost like a red denim. It's not really got a Heather in there. It's like a... I think the two colors are so low contrast they're both like it's like a red and a pink I think like a, a th that it looks almost like just tonal but still heathered so kind of like it looks like denim just like if this was a red denim you've seen red denim pants right where they're kind of less red in some places um, I don't like this color but I was thinking since I have four of these, I could leave two of them this color and take the other two and dye them something else. Get it, baby. You getting it? Oh, you get it, girl. Get it, girl. Um, so I could take the other two, dye them something, and make them as dog sweaters. Because, you know... Stephen West, uh, West Knits, Pet Knits, uh, put out bri the brioche dog sweater this morning. Um, so I went to Willow Yarns and bought like a hundred bucks worth of, uh, Willow Yarns Daily, which is a super wash. I put them all away. <laughs> it's a super wash wool. Um, that I have made for a dog sweater before and Lola really seems, to, that's the one she wears the most. Um, it's not the softest, but it's the one she wears the most. So I, um, ordered a bunch of colors, uh, for her and whatever other dog we end up getting. Um, but I think I'm not going to make those right now because it's summer and I don't have the dog yet. Um, so I'm thinking, plus we don't have, so this is two, and this one's made with DK, and I don't know if they're all made with DK, because I'm pretty sure there's a marled one, and that might be made with um, fingering. So I'm waiting till they all come out, um, and hopefully I'll have the other dog by then, and then, because um, I'd like to make them at the same time. So I'm not like months later going, what, what, how did I do that? You know what I mean? For continuity. So they look good. Um, so I'm not going to make any more of the dog sweaters right now because it's summer and they won't be wearing them. So I'm going to wait till, um, then that'll be fun. I'll have more ways to plan. I also got some, um, bear yarn so I can dye it because it comes in a natural color. So I got like a bunch that were that so I can dye them um, so we'll do that we'll uh, that will probably also do a thing also for summer I have to get dyeing I have to get um, the there's some colors I really wanted to do another collection this year um, and I wanted to get my colors uh, fleshed out um, yeah, my, my Victorian morning colors fleshed out here. Um, so 
I also have to make time for that. Which is probably going to be after May because I got a bunch of... I got the dentist next week and then the week after that I have mammogram, ultrasound, blood work, and then the week after that I have a new doctor to see. So maybe after my birthday we'll be able to do all that, but I'm pretty busy up until then. Okay, so also we still... Oh, I already told you I'm going to continue making the cotton and the cotton knit tops because I have more cotton. Um, so we're just going to keep making those until... I'm going to keep making these until I run out of cotton. And then I will probably... Depending on the status of my stomach, um, by the fall, if this is a um, something we can get taken care of and I can get rid of the, um, the bloating and I can wear stuff, um, I might not be making any more and I don't know what I'm going to do with the like 60 that I have made. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> I guess those will just get turned into dog sweaters. What? Get it, girl. She can't get it. Get it, babe. Um, so yeah, that is my plan for the summer. I would love to hear if you are working on anything for the summer, if there's anything you're looking forward that's coming out. I love stuff that's new I love stuff that's coming out that I don't even know about yet um, it just seems to me that designers don't plan very well they don't plan very well for the seasons and to have things like um, I would have put these pup stuff these pup sweaters out in the fall like August I would have started and like all these sweaters that I'm seeing, I again, August, I would start at late summer so you have fall and winter to, to make your stuff. So I haven't seen anything summery. I'm seeing lots of stuff that I'm like, well, why would I make that right now? <laughs> why, like, where are the tees? Where are the short sleeve stuff? Where's the tank top? Then I saw one that I wanted to make. And it's not coming out till the end of June. And I'm like, you should be putting that out now so people can make them all through the summer. Like, I don't know why you're waiting till the middle of summer to put out a tank top. You should be doing it now when we're all excited for the warmer weather and we want to get going and we want to, you know, have stuff to wear. Um, also, I picked up my souffle top that I put down last year because I thought I made a mistake but I couldn't find the mistake and it's th I'm so far through the thing it I had already I had already um oh I hope you're looking for whoever's trying to burn down my neighborhood but probably not um the souffle top that's not what I wanted Okay, Souffle by Laura Penrose. Looks like this, remember, with the ruffle. I was not going to do the ruffle. I did the pearl row to attach the ruffle, but I didn't want to do the ruffle. So I'm about to um, finish the hem on the bottom. I'm about to bind off that hem. And then it just has sleeves to do, and then it's done. So. Uh, that should be done. Pretty, I started that when my test knit, uh, waiting on my test knit. Because um, I was like, well, what am I going to do? And I was like, well, let's go. I wanted to go through my whips and see if there's anything uh, that was languishing that I might want to do. Like, my shorts are still there, and I'm like, mm, I'm not sure if I want to do those shorts, because what I really want to do with those shorts is make them worsted weight and uh, make them out of a non-superwash. But my problem with that is that they're going to felt because I sit a lot. So I'm thinking we might not do anything with the shorts, even though I really liked them. I have a hard time using knitwear for bottoms. I just, it just doesn't work. So I might have to find like a, 
pair of shorts that are the look I want in some sort of fabric that I would like to wear. Anyway, um, because the only things I can find that, that fit like that, like the Marilyn Monroe type of cut, you know, the high-low where it covers your butt cheeks totally and is kind of high in the front. Well, not high, it's not like a bikini in the front. It's like almost like granny panties. You know what I mean, the high-waisted. Um, I can only find those in like swimsuit bottoms. I'm trying to find them in actual shorts, so... No, we got to bring back the 90s fashion. That's terrible. Can we go back in time a little bit to We brought high waisted back. Can we can we keep going? Can we keep going that way? Um anyway, next week will be um planning May. So, I'm going to go over what specifically I'm planning for May. You've already saw one of them, the black top, which I'm just going to keep those going to keep the momentum to get them done as quick as I can because that's stuff I'm actually going to wear. Um, I also don't have a lot of other. I have the tops, those three tops. i got to figure out which one I'm going to do first and what I'm going to use. Um, but then I don't really have anything else. Um, well, I do have that shawl, but that wasn't really... I'm tr I'm trying to figure out what else I can do that fits into my... You know, my dream wardrobe where I'm trying to not make stuff I'm not going to wear, stuff that I don't want to wear. And so if I need to work, uh, it'll be charity stuff, which I have plenty of charity stuff to do. It's not even... But I that I did is not in... That doesn't get me excited. <laughs> you know, that's more for like, I'm bored, let's do this. And it's not, ex I think it's, I haven't touched that um, hat since I felt good since my surgery. I'm like, nope. But that was like all I could do to get through surgery. So I don't know. So I'm wondering if I should like look forward to um, the fall because there is a, a, a cardigan, The Harvest by, is it Tinkin? It's Harvest. I've talked about it before. Um, because it's one of their knit, knit simple things. It's a knit simple thing. And I thought if I had that, if, if I could get that to fit me. Um, also, it's free. I have two different yarns to make this um, cardigan. And if it fits me, then I could, um, you know, I'm real good at change, changing the math to with the gauge to get what I want. Um, there's other things I want that I want a uh, short, like shorter sleeved and stuff. So I was like, totally <laughs> do this in the other yarns I wanted to do. Um, but I have to make that one first to make sure it fits me. Um, so I might start that along with everything. And then I also have the burdock and the slumber shawl that I have not finished um, because it's not hot yet. But and I was thinking the harvest, I might, um, the harvest cardigan, I might get started earlier because I want to make, <coughs> I want to make two of those. One, <coughs> see what that fire messed up. <coughs> One of them will be non-superwash that I will wear probably um, over, just over these. So that won't matter. Um, but I want to make another one in a bigger size that I can make over fingering weight sweaters because this is what my dream wardrobe consists of. I want to make V-neck um, fingering weight sweaters like the lunch at Tiffany's or like a like the rocket tee but be be long sleeve which is, would be easy enough to convert to long sleeve because it has short sleeves um, so that's my plan is to make v-neck pullovers that are fingering weight um, and then make cardigans to go over them 
so I would have like, I would have this layer, this layer, then a v-neck um, sweater, a fingering weight v-neck sweater, and then a worsted weight <laughs> uh, cardigan. That is like my dream wardrobe. And then layer, either layered skirts, probably layered skirts with, you know, pants underneath. Um, cause that's how I like to wear things, um, for winter. Um, so that's where I'm going with that. And I'd like to have quite a few cardigans and, um, I'm trying to figure out how to do the, a uh, fingering weight sweaters because I have a lot of two, uh, two skein colors that I think I could do like right body well not if they're I was thinking black sleeves but if they're what you call it that only works if they're like a drop sleeve if they're not a drop sleeve if they're like a what do you call it raglan sleeve then I don't know how to how to do the black that would look nice though wouldn't it have the raglan be I wonder how hard that is to do is that hard to do I assuming you have to twist them before you make them so they when you change color because if I did black sleeve that would look freaking awesome wouldn't it that would look awesome okay let's to think about I got but I got I got to find a pattern first that fits so that's number one pattern that fits so that's I think I'm the rocket team might be first I think I might be rocket team first maybe maybe okay I'm getting out of here cuz um, now that everyone's gone and it's quiet maybe I can see if they've stopped burning crap and I can open my windows Thank you for um, spending the hour with me. Um, take care of yourselves. I'll see you next week. Bye.